Hello and welcome to Pictures in Cells. My name is Jeff, I'm glad you're here. Let's just jump right in. For decades, we've been able to insert pictures into our worksheet, and when we do, they float in the drawing layer over the grid. Now, however, we can insert pictures directly into cells. Let's check it out. Exercise one. All right, in this exercise, we're just gonna look at what we've been able to do for decades. We've been able to insert pictures into our worksheets, and we can do that by copy and paste or insert pictures. And when we do, they sort of float in this drawing layer above the grid. And in this drawing layer, we're able to sort of resize them and we can apply tons of different picture formats. And we've been able to do this for years. Now, however, we have a new option. Let's go to the next exercise, exercise two. Now what I can actually do is I can place the picture in a cell. To do so, I go to insert, illustrations, pictures, place in cells. And by the way, depending on when you're watching this video, your version of Excel may not have access to this feature. The quickest way to determine if you do is go to insert illustrations, pictures, and see if you have the place in cells command. As you can see, we can insert pictures from many different sources. Let's do it from this device. We just navigate to our picture and insert it. Now that picture is stored in the cell, like a cell value. The first thing to note is that this picture is gonna auto resize based on the cell's dimensions. So if I expand the cell size, the picture is going to automatically resize accordingly. Now, the other thing I can do is I can right click picture in cell and I can actually create a reference. And this reference picture is going to update based on the cell value. So for example, if I select this cell and I go to insert illustrations, pictures, place in cells, this device, and I update it with next year's badge, that's going to automatically update as well. So this is basically a reference to this cell value is what this really is. Now I'm trying to keep these videos short. So this is really just the introduction to pictures and cells. And in the future videos in this series, we're gonna mess around with this and see how we can use these in formulas, pivot tables, and more. In the previous video, I showed how we can insert pictures into cells. In this video, I'm gonna show how we can use those cell values in our formulas. Exercise one. Okay, now in the previous video, I demonstrated how we could insert pictures as cell values directly into cells by going to insert illustrations, pictures, place in cells, this device, and browse to the image you want and double click it and insert it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get all these badges quickly. Okay, now we've inserted these images into these cells and we're gonna use them with formulas. So remember, these pictures basically become cell values and so we can certainly use them in formulas just like we would with other cell values. To make this a little easier, I'm gonna go ahead and insert a table. And now with our badge table complete, let's go to the next exercise, exercise two. In this exercise, we wanna have Excel retrieve the correct picture based on the entered year. So we can do this with our favorite lookup function, whether it's VLOOKUP, index match, or XLOOKUP. In this case, I'm gonna use XLOOKUP. Equals XLOOKUP, we wanna go find this, comma, in here, comma, and we wanna return this badge image. Close the function and enter. It looks like it worked, but I need to zoom in so I can really confirm this. And there's a couple of different ways to do this. If I wanted to, I could increase the cell dimensions so that I could actually see it. And that would be totally fine. But if I wanted to leave the grid with their default cell dimensions, what I can also do is just create a reference. So I can right click this, picture in cell, create a reference. And now this image is actually floating. And this is right, this is the badge that's effective through 2019. And if I were to go to 2020, this is correct. This is the badge that's valid through 2020. 2021, this is the badge that's valid through 2021. So this looks like it's working. So this cell value is being retrieved through the XLOOKUP function. And this reference is pointing to whatever cell value is here. And so this gives me a couple of different options. So if I just wanted to display the value in the cell, I could reformat the cell and column width and row height to accommodate the image size or I can just float it like this, and that would be fine. If I were to do this, then I'd have access to all of the different picture formats as well, so I might wanna use that option as well. And we go to 2022, and now we get the badge image that's valid for 2022. So what we've been able to do is we've been able to store a picture inside of a cell. It basically becomes a cell value, which we can then retrieve with formulas. We can also create a reference so that the picture floats in case we wanna apply formatting or position it outside of the grid.
All right, in the previous videos in this pictures series, we were able to insert pictures from our local device into cells in the worksheet. In this video, we're gonna retrieve online pictures instead. Exercise one. In this exercise, I basically created a little data table that includes my book volume, the ISBN, and then this is a link to an online image. And what we wanna do is grab this online image and we're gonna do that in the next exercise, exercise two. Okay, so I wanna be able to type in whichever volume I'm looking for, and then I want Excel to retrieve the title, the ISBN, and the actual cover image from that URL. And here we can use our favorite lookup function, whether it's VLOOKUP, index match, or XLOOKUP, or whatever you want. In this case, I'll use XLOOKUP, equals XLOOKUP. I wanna go find this, comma, in here, comma, and I wanna return the title. Close the function and enter. Let's do the same thing with ISBN, equals XLOOKUP. I wanna go find this, comma, in here, comma, I wanna return this. Close function, enter. So far, so good. And now for the cover, equals X lookup. I wanna go find this, comma, in here, comma, and I wanna return this. Close function, enter. Now that we've retrieved the correct URL, we actually need to convert that into a picture or into an image. And the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna wrap the image function around the X lookup function. And the image function takes a source URL and retrieves the image. Enter. And now it's been placed in the cell. And now that this image is in the cell, we have a couple of options. One is if we want, we can change the cell dimensions to accommodate the picture, and that would be totally fine. The other option we can do is right click picture and cell and say create reference. And this creates an image that's floating above the grid. And so we can put that anywhere that we want. And we're free to apply any type of picture format as well. So now if we go to two, that should update, three should update, and four should update as well. In this video, we're gonna show how we can use pictures and cells, in other words, pictures as cell values inside of pivot tables. Let's just get started. Exercise one. All right, so the first step was to create my little icons table. And so what I did was I took the weather description and I inserted these pictures into the cells. The way that I did that is I went to insert, illustrations, pictures, place in cells, and then I browsed to my local device and I inserted each of these pictures. Now that these pictures are stored in cells as cell values, I can use them in formulas. So for example, let's say I wanted to retrieve these icons into this weather data table. You can use your favorite lookup function, VLOOKUP, index match, X lookup, whatever. I'm gonna go with X lookup, and I'm gonna go find this weather, comma, in here, comma, and I'm gonna return this icon, close function, and enter. And now I have these pictures that represent the weather for the day. So now that these are cell values, can we use them like in pivot tables? I don't know, let's find out. Exercise two. In this exercise, we're gonna create a pivot table. So let's go back to exercise one. We'll select any cell within the range, insert pivot table from table range. We want to add the pivot table to an existing worksheet. Exercise two, pick a cell and click OK. Now what we see in our pivot table fields is we have date, city, high, low, weather, and the icon column. So like what, can we actually insert this icon column into a pivot table? Yeah, into the rows or columns layout area. So check it out. Let me insert icon into the rows layout area. And now maybe we wanna count the number of days. So we can insert date into the values layout area. And now we get the count of the number of days for each of these weather conditions. And let's just play around. Maybe we wanna see it by city, so we could do that. Maybe we wanna see city over here and icon up here. So you can see this icon field is just a normal pivot table field. So I can put icon into columns. I can put icon into rows. Now I could also put city up here. I could put icon here. And if I wanted the weather description, I could certainly put it in here as well. And then I can change my report layout to tabular. I can remove subtotals and I can take off the row column headers and I can take off the plus minus buttons. So as you can see, by having a picture in a cell and being able to insert that into a pivot table, it opens up a lot of really interesting possibilities.
In this video, we're going to see how we can insert an image into a cell value using a data type and then send that into a pivot table. Exercise one. In this exercise, we have a list of employees. We have their employee ID, first name, last name, and department, city, and state. Now, I could easily create a pivot table based on this data range, but if I wanted to make the pivot table more interesting, I can easily add a state flag. The trick to doing this is to convert this state column into a geography data type and then inserting the state flag image automatically. Here's how we do that. We select the state column, we go to data, and then under data types, we pick geography. Now Excel has converted that state column into geography data types. The really cool thing about geography data types is there is a lot of rich data stored with it. To add that rich data, I can click this add column icon. And this is a lot of the rich data that's available through this linked data type. For example, I can show the state abbreviation and many other data points. The one I want right now is called image. And this brings in the state flag. Now that this is stored in a cell, I can use this in a pivot table. So let's go to the next exercise. Exercise two. Let's create a pivot table right here. I'm gonna go back to my data and I'm gonna click insert pivot table from table range. I'm gonna pick existing worksheet and I'm gonna pick this cell and I'm gonna click OK. Now, I can add the state abbreviation if I wanted to. I can add the count and the department. If I wanted to make it more interesting though, I can easily add the image instead. So I can add the image and take off the abbreviation and this is gonna give me a column of all of the state flags. And since this is a pivot table, I can organize this in a variety of different ways. So the point is by adding pictures into cells through the data types, it makes it very easy to insert these pictures into pivot tables. Hey, hopefully this helps. Thanks for joining me, have a great day. Hey, Excel user, if you ever need to create summary reports, check out my pivot table for beginners video. It starts at the beginning and shows how to store the data transactions in a table and then how to summarize those transactions with a pivot table report. I hope Hope it helps unlock the incredible power of pivot tables. This video is a production of Excel University.